to tractor pull an army this has got to be the most prestigious indoor pulling event in the entire world richard it is anybody that's involved in agriculture this is a pilgrimage they come here once a year to see all the latest equipment that's coming out in the farm industry plus to see the best in pulling and believe me tonight they're going to see it with the modified tractors as well as what we call the smokers richard and of course that's two different levels of competition Tell us the difference and how the fans can pull for their favorites. Well, the modified tractors are the old American ingenuity. How many engines can you hang on them? We're going to have one vehicle in particular be running seven engines. You're going to see all types of engine combinations, 120 mile an hour wheel speed. Then we're going to bounce over to the smoker category. Okay, the super stock tractors, they look like field tractors. However, they're limited on their tower width. They can run a turbocharger. Actually, these vehicles came out of the assembly line, developing 120 horsepower. They're developing over 2,000 horsepower, as we're going to be seeing on this evening, Richard. And also, we have to remember, they say the track here in Louisville, Kentucky, is probably the best track indoors in the entire world. Can someone take it the full distance? We'll find out next on Power Track. This the 9,500-pound Superstock tractor competition already in progress. Thus far, we have already seen five full pulls as Stan Blagrave is coming out next to pull. Stan, out of Ackerley, Texas, he drives a tractor called the Red Thunder. Well, look, the, these tractors are literally put on a war. The people that are involved in this industry, they drive tractors like this. Bragging rights is the state. This gentleman came all the way from the Lone Star State of Texas to try to put a win under his belt. Ground speed so important, Richard, we're into the super stock category. Look at him roll, has to get a full pull, and he's done it. <laughs> Make it six of these super stock tractors in a pull-off. What a show these fans in Louisville are getting tonight. And Army, briefly, if we could, let's explain this long tube that you're going to see throughout the entire television show tonight. Well, periodically, you're going to notice the super stockers, as they back up, their exhaust have to go into that tube. The reason being, the tube takes all the exhaust or the smoke out of the building. Now, that'll play an important factor as the members of the Northwest Ohio Tractor Pullers Association are helping with that tube. We could not be running this class if it wasn't for this particular piece of equipment. And, of course, also, we are moving into a pull-off now. That means something else, Army. That means they are going to re-weight the sled and reset the gearing on the sled. Is that correct? Well, the weight looks like it's going in the sled now. You're correct, Richard. They've got to figure some way to pull these vehicles down now. The sled is going to stop them from behind, but I tell you something you can listen for is a little chirping sound. That is the sound of the turbocharger. It can stop you in the front. We're getting ready to go with the pull-off. Who's going to be coming out first? Well, we have got six tractors in this pull-off. Our first one to hit the track is called the Pride of the Farm. It's Dennis Goodwin. Dennis is out of Iowa, and he has got one nice looking tractor there. Good one lines up. Everybody's going to be watching him to see what happens. Now remember, normally these fellas are pulling outdoors and they can watch the smoke of the tractor. That's very important because the smoke tells them the fuel mixture. Indoors, it's not the case. A good run going, Richard. He's looking awfully strong. Distance 191.08 for Dennis Goodwin. I don't think he's going to be real happy with that distance. Dennis, you're the first to make the pull pull. You go the first in the pull off. But I noticed at the end of the run, you shook your head like in disgust. It looked like a good run to me, didn't it? Well, I killed it, Army, is what I did. I uh, got it real hot in the last run. I might have ruined this brand new engine already. What's the track like out there on the second run? It's, it's real good shape, real good shape. They've done a fantastic job. Well, you're set number one. Let's see if you can hang on to it. I certainly hope so. Thank you. Well, he's got five guys to go to try to hold off. The first of the five, Tom Casting, out of Franklin, Indiana. It's called the Hoosier Deer, and the reason for that, Army, he runs and owns a John Deere tractor dealership with his family back up in Indiana. Well, he and his father are involved heavily in the business. As a matter of fact, I don't believe his dad's going to be able to be here tonight. He's leaving it up to the sun. Now, look at the determination. He wants to win. He's watching the gauges. Uh -oh. They're watching all kind of boosts. Now, he doesn't even, I don't think he's even aware of the smoke. Look at his concentration on the gauges. When it's right, he'll roll. Does the smoke mean, mean problem? I don't know, but he, he is so intent on the vehicle. It doesn't make any difference now. It's up to him. He's either going to do it or not. Ground speed looks good. Comes over to the right side. Look at the beautiful run that Deere put down. The John Deere has smoked it a distance of 212. Point five zero. He takes over first place. Yeah, that's old green one. It's been doing pretty good. It's it's a little hard. All the guys that's in this class, it seems like are having trouble getting out of the hole. And, and I had trouble both times of getting it out of the hole. The second time it lit better. 
the tractor lit and uh, the turbos come up and the pressure come up. It looked good. Okay, now there's a lot of smoke coming out of the vehicle right on the starting line. What was that from? It was over fueling it. It was the turbos were not speeding fast enough, turning fast enough to get them up on top end. And indoors, where you got the exhaust system like it, it's hard to tell sometimes when you don't pull enough indoors. Okay, because you cannot physically see the smoke, so you don't know exactly where your fuel mixture is. That's right. And then when you, you got to operate it by the clutch only and hope you get the chargers turning fast enough to pick it up. The first time out, I didn't get the chargers picked up till the 150 foot mark. This time I got it picked up out of the hole and it felt a lot better. It not only felt better, it was better. Tom Casting is our leader as we get ready next for Jay Fuqua. He is out of Springfield, Tennessee. He is driving an International Harvester 3688. Well, Richard, remember what Tom told us just a moment ago in that interview? I find that very interesting, the fact that normally these drivers, they watch their exhaust stacks to know exactly when the fuel mixer's right. You cannot do it with the setup we have indoors because the, the exhaust system has to be funneled through and it's not going to work. It's exactly what's happening here. He was not able to get up on top or to get the turbochargers where they're making the horsepower he needed to get down the track. You can tell it in his distance, 118.47 for Jay Fuqua out of Springfield, Tennessee. So our leader remains Tom Casting. We've got four more tractors to go in this super pull-off from Louisville, Kentucky, continuing next on Power Tracks. We have seen a couple of guys. Our leader is a John Deere tractor. We're moving on. Four to go. This is Joe Kwiatkowski. He's out of Door, Michigan. It's called the Wild Thing, and that also is an IH. Well, the international people are going to be pulling for their product, but right now, everybody that's wearing green is tickled to death because John Deere sits on top of this thing. So here we go. The distance to beat now, remember, is the distance of Tom Casting. That is 212.50. What is he doing Richard, there? notice the determination these drivers have. They're watching so many gauges, trying to get the boost up, trying to get the water injectors working, all kind of smoke coming out from the vehicle. Another, another incident where the turbochargers did not get on top. 90.03, so a terrible distance for Joe in this pull-off. If we can get a replay of that, guys, I saw something shooting up out of the engine. Could you explain that to Well, us? They, they do inject water in the vehicles. It, it, what happened was he was just not able to read the exhaust on it. When they're outdoors, Richard, they can read the exhaust and tell when the fuel mixture's right. We explained the exhaust system in this building. It's different. It, well, here comes Old Faithful now. This is Benny McKinnon. He is out of Illinois, and he is driving the only Alice Chalmers tractor in the competition. So all the big orange people, the AC people, are going to be pulling for him. He's getting into it, working the right side, looking good. Front end looks just about right. Look at him. He's pumped up. He's even using body English, Richard, and it works. Benny McKinnon, 197.29. That is going to be good enough right now to put him up into the top three in this pull-off army. And I guess the question now is, does he think he can stay in the top three? Okay, Benny, it's everybody's dream to be where you are right now. That's sitting inside Louisville in the top three. Can you stay in this top three, or is somebody behind you going to be able to bump you off tonight? Uh, there's a pretty good one back here. Probably won't ever do it. Okay, this is the second time you pulled on the track tonight. It's been about an hour since your first run. We went through the class. We're in a pull-off. Is the track any different right now than the first time you pulled on it? No, it's about the same. You get the weight right on it. And you can pull her any time. you got the power and the weight right on your track. That's all you need. Okay, now, real quick, Benny, what time is it? It's Miller Lifetime. Well, I think, I think I know who the sponsorship is on his tractor. As we get ready for our final two tractors, our next one coming out, Mark Gettinger out of Milton, Indiana. It's called the Equalizer. Gettinger, roll. Look at that. He is going after him. He's, I've said it before. He pulled the trigger. Let's see if it's going to work for him. Good run, Richard. It's good. But not quite good enough. Mark Gettinger, a former national TNT Motorsports champion, goes 195.79. Those are John Deere fans, Army, and they're standing up because they're in first place right now. Richard, everybody that's wearing green has got a big smile on their face. However, it's not over till it's over. We're going to find out who comes out next. Let's see, is there supposed to be a fat lady to come out and sing or something? I don't know, but in this sport, you got to be sweating. This guy's sitting at the sled right now. Here's our final puller. It is Stan Blagrave out of Ackerley, Texas. He calls his tractor the Red Thunder. And for all you International Harvester fans, this is your last shot. Red going after green. Let's just kick back and see what's going to happen. Either International or John Deere. Who's going to take the most prestigious indoor pull of the year? 
John Deere is going to win it. Boy. Dan Blaygrave only goes 197.01. So your winner, Tom Casings out of Indiana, your John Deere driver. Boy, is he being congratulated by everybody. He is one happy son you of a gun. Believe it. Tom, congratulations. Uh, uh, not only a great victory for you, but everybody that you pull against was over here to congratulate you. You're an awfully popular guy. Way to go. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. This pull has meant a lot to me, and it, 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 you don't know how many people have to help you to make you win a pull like this. I got an excellent mechanic, um, and Mike Robbins, and it just it takes a lot of coordination and a lot of help at home. I, my dad, I really, he's not here tonight. He's back home running the business, and it's really it takes a lot of work, and I appreciate this so much. But I, ICI does a nice, nice job down here. Tracks in good shape. Tractor competitors were good competitors tonight, but we're top dog tonight, and that feels good. Congratulations to you. I know you want to get home and call your dad. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Boy, he is one happy guy. Congratulations to Tom Casings as we run down the top five. It was Dennis Goodwin fifth, Mark Gettinger fourth, third, Stan Blagrave. Second goes to Benny McKinnon, your winner tonight. You see how happy he is, Tom Casings. And when we come back, we're moving on to the 9,200-pound modified tractor's great action still right around the corner on Power Tracks tractor division and coming out first is going to be fred freeman out of wadesville indiana driving the mean mistreater look at those awesome engines well richard the people were treated to a super show in the super stock category this is a horse of a different color i mean horsepower that's the name of this class 92 mods freeman rolls out a vietnam vet keep an eye on his right hand that's a throttle hand relies on triple a for the horsepower first shot out of the box let's see what's going to happen To it. A full pull for Fred Freeman. First out of the shoot. Way to go, big guy, all the way from Indiana. Our first puller gets a full pull. The crowd is loving him in Louisville, Kentucky. Hey, what, Fred? You're close to home. That must be a lot of your hometown folks here, because this crowd is really going crazy after it runs. Yes, Army, this is worse than a hometown bull here. I believe more people come to this one. Fred, when you run this many engines, cooling has got to be a problem setting up on the starting line. How in the world do you keep them cool? Well, we run alcohol for one thing, and uh, also I'm lucky enough to get synthetic oil from Amico Oil, which uh, it stays a lot cooler than regular engine oil does, and I don't lose much oil pressure at all going down the track. So the synthetic oil seems to really work for you? Yes, I'm real tickled with it. Well, we just received word you are the official leader, so hang on. They're going to be coming after you with everything they have in Louisville. Thank you. I hope nobody else makes it out. <laughs> Words of wisdom from fast Freddie Freeman out of Waitsville, Indiana. He is our leader with a full pull distance. Coming out next is a legendary name in the world of pulling. We're talking about Tim Engler out of Princeton, Indiana, as well as being one of the foremost builders in the country. He is also debuting a first time ever seven engine tractor. An Army spent some time earlier today with Tim Engler. Now seven engines, Tim. How in the world did you come up with that combination? Well, it was something that we wanted to try to do after running a five engine area tractor, and we needed to do something to save money. So we decided to create a Chevrolet engine tractor that would be as competitive as what we had before, but save ourselves money. So what we did is we built cheaper Chevrolet motors, and we, to come up with the same amount of horsepower that we used to have with a five Arius engine tractor, we needed to add engines to our tractor. Okay, so we knew we needed at least five motors in the 7,000 pound class to be equal horsepower to what we had before. Then we wanted to be able to add motors for the 9,000 pound class. And to do that, we came up with a combination that we had been working on with side mounted motors or transverse mounted engines. Okay, now that all puts all the power through the rear tires. What kind of wheel speed do you turn with a combination like this and what kind of horsepower do you make? Basically, these Chevrolet motors make around 1,100 horsepower each. Uh, gear ratio depends on track condition, but we're up in the 120 mile an hour range, uh, depending on what class it is, but that's, that's pretty well the highest. Sometimes we'll get up 140 miles per hour on different track conditions. But uh, all in all, it, uh, it's worked out real well so far. Well, let's see how this seven-engine setup of Tim Engler can do. Now, Army Fred Freeman just made a full pull with five engines. The everyday guy would think seven engines ought to be able to do it also. Well, on paper, it looks like it might work, but remember, they both weigh 9,200 pounds. Can you get the horsepower to the track? Engler has the horsepower, but I'll tell you what, the first 50 feet, it was...
was not there for him. A little bit slippery on the start line. That's going to cost him on the other end. Only a 2.11. 2.11.26 six for Tim Engler. You said a little slippage at the starting line. Would that be from the track or because of the gear setup of the tractor? I think he was just making way too much horsepower for this particular track. All right, that brings out an interesting setup. Coming out here, Art Arfons. He's out of Akron, Ohio. It's called the Green Monster. Army, those are twin turbine helicopter engines. Well, horsepower, again, will be no problem. It's going to get right back to a driver's track. The track will hold almost everything you have. Let's see what's going to happen. Arfon steps up and actually goes head-to-head -head in competition. Kind of a new role for him. Let's see how tough he really is with the Bush Monster twin turbine. Listen to that. Sounded like a jet plane coming in. 213.35 for Art off Arpon. Didn't get the distance, but boy, what a show. Yeah, Arpon, what can you say? The name Arpon, he's held the world speed record. He's going to go back in the future and try to take another shot at it. We're glad to have him in this sport. Currently, Chevrolet's on top, and look what's back into the sled. The man that has won every major pulling event in America except... The National Farm Machinery Show. Dave and Ralph Banner are coming to town loaded for a win. Believe David, me, Richard. David Banner, 15-time Grand National Champion, is off and rolling in the Mr. Chevy. Banner coming at you on the big end. Watch out. Sam Powell. Banner going out of here. He does it. He has put it on the beach, Army. You coined the phrase many months ago. Everyone is picking up on it. A beach means a full pull. David Banner has done it. He is going to join Bass, Freddie Freeman at a pull-off. Maybe we'll have more. We'll find out when we come back on ESPN with more of Power Track. And welcome back to Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky. Power Tracks continues with the 9,200-pound modified tractor division. We are talking the major leagues of professional truck and tractor pulling right here with TNT Motorsports as we're getting ready next for Dave Walsh. It's called the Irish Challenger. He is running Arius engines on top, Army. Richard, what you can look for the rest of the night. Banner's made a full pull. Freeman's made a full pull. The pressure goes on everybody else. You have got to just literally put it on kill if you're going to get it out of here. Walsh is trying to get into a pull off. Let's see if he can do it. Look at that distance, 234.99, 235 would have been a full pull. Dave Walsh missed a full pull by one one hundredth of a foot. Well, Dave, you can't get any closer than that. It was not a full pull by one one hundredth of a foot on a 235 track. You go a 234.99. I guess can't get any closer than that. Well, you're sitting in the number three spotlight right now. Maybe you'll hang on and take that one of the prestigious top three positions out of here. Good luck to you. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, a heartbreak city for Dave Walsh as he just misses getting into a pull-off with that gentleman right there, David Banner. Well, Dave Banner wants to take a win. He's conversing with his crew right now as if they're going to make any changes. They're going to a pull-off with Freeman. The question is, is anybody else going to be able to get in a pull-off? Richard, the drama is building in Louisville, Kentucky right now. Our next puller is Russ Jansen out of Oregon, Illinois. He calls his tractor the Blackhawk Special. Remember, it is going to take a full pull to join Fred Freeman and the Banner brothers in this pull-off. Well, the pressure is on all the rest of the field. Banner and Freeman, they know they're going to have to come back. These guys have got to make a full pull and then see if they can come back. We do not have a full pull on this run. Oh, no. He boxed down real quick uh, down the tractor. 188.65. Remember, a full pull, 235 feet. Uh, I guess sometimes number two isn't like being number one. It's falling. Hey, Richard, keep an eye on this guy. Phil Patterson teams up with Brian Knox. They're out of New York. Patterson always runs on K-I-L-L. -L. He will go after you in a heartbeat. Patterson came to the Bluegrass State to win. Let's see what's going to happen. It's called the Sassy Nasty. Whoa, oh, fire! We have got problems on the track. Yeah, but he didn't back out of it. He came to win and wouldn't. About a $30,000 engine explosion. Your replay shows he kept his foot right in it, Richard. He wanted to win this thing. It was not to be. 169.96, but to heck with the distance. 
Hey, thanks Bill Patterson and the Sassy Massey for a great show. Well, Brian Knox in the brown jacket there, he's the owner and builder of the vehicle along with his father. They hired this man to drive the tractor, and believe me, you're not going to get a better driver than that guy right there. He gave her a ride, Richard. The thousands of fans in Louisville, Kentucky certainly enjoyed the spectacle that Phil Patterson just gave us. And now we're down to our final puller army, and it is a good one. We're talking about Mike Piper out of Mount Vernon, Illinois. If anybody can take it the length of the track, this guy could do it. Well, Piper has taken a win on the TNT National Circuit before. He's kind of at a handicap. If you notice the front engine, the front engine is not functional. He's actually just making a four-engine run. Now, he relies on the Aries engine for the horsepower, but that's not going to produce enough horsepower this evening in Louisville. Mike Piper finally closes it off at 224.54. That means our pull-off is going to be between David Banner and Fred Freeman. That is going to be coming up next on Power Tracks, but right now it is time for our question of the week. And this week we are going to be talking about the tire treads on the modified tractors. And this question of the week about the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series comes to us from Bill London of Waco, Texas. And Bill wants to know why the tire treads are so short on most of the pulling vehicles. He seems to think that a deeper tread would give you better traction. Well, Bill, pullers do tend to grind down the height off the cleats of the tire. A tall cleat would tend to dig too much into the track, throwing dirt behind the vehicle and in front of the sled. That, of course, would slow the pulling vehicle down. As we all know, the name of the game in pulling is momentum. Pullers can get the sled moving faster if the tires literally float across the surface. They need to get these tires spinning as much as possible for a full or a longer pull. And if you have a question of the week about the Red Man TNT All-American Pulling Series, send it to us at TNT Motorsports, 5515 Poplar Park Boulevard, Louisville, Kentucky, 40228. If we use your question on a future broadcast, we'll send you free a TNT Motorsports hat. And then there were two. The sign says it all in Freedom Hall. We are ready for a pull-off. Two guys are there. They're both champions. Fred Freeman, Mean Miss Treater coming out first with Chevrolet Power. Keep an eye on the right hand, Richard. When he nails it, he's going to be coming after you. It's going to be an all Chevrolet final. Wade Bill, Indiana, and he's going to the right, tripping to the left. Wow. Leaning on equipment goes a 161.26. Can Banner beat it? That's the question. He uh, obviously is a fan there. Fred Freeman out of Wade Bill, Indiana. A lot of Hoosiers cross the state line into Freedom Hall for this championship tractor pull each and every year. And now it's down to one. David Banner, a 16-time national champion, must go beyond that 161 mark sent by Fred Freeman to get the win. Banner calls on the Chevrolet horsepower. Let's see if it's going to be there. He's won everything there is to win except this event. And now he's won that. Richard Banner will take the win in Louisville. Hey. championship trophy on his mantle. Every win is exciting. I'll tell you what, this is, I've been coming here a long time to get this one, and, you know, I'm glad to beat them all. I'll tell you, they, they, you know, I run with them about every weekend and stuff, and uh, I'm always tickled to beat them. I'll tell you, everybody in this sport that was anybody was here, and you won it tonight. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Boy, it's a great show by all the drivers tonight as we give you the final top five. Coming in fifth place tonight was Art Arfons. Taking fourth was Mike Piper. Coming in third tonight in Louisville, that was Dave Walsh. Second went to Fred Freeman. Your champion was David Banner. For Army Armstrong, I'm Richard Lake. We'll see you again on the tracks across America. Join us next time for 